Lesson 8 in this chapter is going to be teaching us how to represent functions as graphs. Uh, lesson 7 of this chapter taught us how to represent functions as tables. Graphs are the next step. And graphs are a really nice way to show functions. You can really see the relationship when you put it on, a, on spatial terms like a graph. The input on the x-axis and the output on the y-axis. And you can really see lines, you can see trends. So that's why graphs are used so often. Uh, so we're going to learn how to graph functions. We'll write function rules for graphs. Then we'll analyze the graph itself and, and determine what it means. So let's look at this one. We have the graph the function y equals 1 half times x with a domain of 0, 2, 4, 6, and 8. So I already have the domain in here. We need to figure out the range or the output. Um, so we know y equals 1 half times x. So if this is x, we just need to multiply each of these times 1 half to find out the output. So for the first one, 0 times 1 half would just be 0. 2 times 1 half, or 1 half of 2, would just be 1. You can always multiply these times 0.5, 2 if you would like as well. 4 times 1 half would be 2. 6 times 0.5, or 1 half, would be 3. And then 8 times 1 half would be 4. And then now we can try plotting these on the line. So we would have 0 and 0 for our first point of the line. We would have input of 2, output of 1, so x2, output 1. We would have input of 4, output of 2, so x4, output 2. We would have an input of 6, output of 3, so x6, output y3. And then we have an input of 8, an output of 4, so input x8, output y4. And you'll notice this is why graphs are so great. You can just see this relationship here. There's a line that's going to be going. And because of that line, you can predict what's going to be happening with 10. You can predict what happens even if you go to the negatives. It's a really useful tool. So this is what they mean when they want you to plot the points on the graph. Here we need to write function rules for graphs. So it gives us the graph here, and we need to write a rule for the function represented by this graph. We need to identify the domain and range of the function as well. So we have an input of 1 and an output of 0. So if we go over here, that would be an output of 0. When the input is 2, the output is also 2. When the input is 3 right here, the output is 4. When the input is 4, the output is 6. So you'll kind of notice there's, there's some kind of pattern going on here. This one's a little more difficult than the last one. We notice that this is going up by twos. So if, if this uh, same logical sequence continues, this would be negative two right here for zero. So that would actually go below this line at negative two. So now we need to figure out what the rule would be. So we see that it, for every one it goes over, it goes two up. See that? So rise two, run one. We'll learn about rise and run later, but this will teach you that y equals two times x. It's rising two for every one it's going over. But it's also it's also taking something away. So when it's at zero, two x is zero, the output is negative two. That means we were subtracting two from our answer here. And we could test our answer to see if we like it too. So we could try plugging in three for x. So we'd say y equals 2 times 3 minus 2. 2 times 3 is 6, minus 2 would equal 4. So do we have 3 and 4? 3 and 4, that matches up perfectly. So you can always check your answers as well. So the domain would be 0, 1, 2, 3, and 4. The range would be negative 2, 0, 2, 4, and 6. Here's a real-world situation then. The graph shows guitar sales in millions of dollars for a chain of music stores for the period of 1999 to 2005. Identify the independent variable and the dependent variable. Describe how you would expect sales in 2006 to compare to sales in 2005. So first thing we need to do is identify the independent variable and the dependent variable. Being independent means there's nothing that really influences you. So if you look at these two different kinds of variables, we have years since 1999, which is just counting up, and we have this one that are based on the sales on the year. And the independent variable is usually on the x-axis, and this is the case here because the years just count up. 
there's nothing that's influencing the ears. There's nothing you can really do to stop the ears from coming. These sales could go any direction based on the year. And it's kind of based on the year that the sales go up or down. So the years would be independent and then sales would be dependent. All right, next one. Describe how would you expect sales in 2006 to compare to sales in 2005. So a year since 1999, this would be 2005 because 1999 plus six is 2005. So if you notice, there's this graph shows that there is a trend and the trend is pointing up. So we see that sales, even though they were at 0.4 in 1999, they're at 1. I would say 1.3 million um, in, to, in 2005. So if we're going to say to 2006, we don't have to give an exact number. All we really have to say is that sales will likely increase in 2006. And we can't say for certain because we can't predict the future, but it is a really good indication that sales will be increasing because this is the trend that this graph is going.